today we'll be doing a showcase for one of the another exclusive champion and that would be Lothair. I love the design of the champion, it reminds me actually of uh, Initwe from Raid Shadow Legends. I don't know how many of you have played that game before, uh, but the design is actually pretty similar. So let's take a look at his skills first. <coughs> and the first thing is he has an enlightenment aura and uh, similar to Flora, his, his aura is for all battles as well. So uh, enlightenment affects the derived damage. His ultimate also deals damage based out of his enlightenment. And another thing to note is that the poison tick damage, uh, which is the damage done to an enemy based on how many stacks of poison they have, is also somehow affected by uh, enlightenment. But when we read the description, doesn't really mention it, it just states 0.5% of the target's max HP and 30% of the caster's attack. Uh, I think this description needs to be updated in the game because uh, even when I use Durongo, it does matter the amount of enlightenment does he have. As passive, when the hero skill deal damage to a target under poison, deals additional derived damage. Uh, so this actually pairs well with other poisoners in the team. So I'll be using Durongo for most of my fight because I think he's the best poisoner in the game. Simply because his passive uh, places poisons right at the start of the round, uh, which helps our Lothair deal uh, that derived damage. His battle skill is like a jumper, so he will jump to the uh, enemy with the lowest HP dealing 250% of the attack and has a 75% chance of inflicting two stacks and if you book him if you use your scrolls on him uh, fully you'll get that 100% chance of placing two stacks of poison. Uh, the reason that we're using Durango with him is that uh, paired with him Durango does a lot of stacks of poison so we want to get that damage done as well. And this jumping ability is not the best jumping ability out there. Uh, I think a lot of the jumpers have similar charge time, but Nasjenka is probably the best jumper. Moving to his ultimate, he leaps and strikes at the designated area, dealing 250% of attack and 1200% enlightenment. Uh, so this actually hits pretty hard. Uh, I've used it in dungeons and this one hits for a lot of damage. Um, and it does like a follow up to tornado slashes each dealing 1200% of the enlightenment. So he does hit quite hard. Uh, the issue with Lothair as compared to other exclusives uh, is that he's a melee unit. And melee unit mostly in this game are generally weak because if your DPS is a melee unit it's hard to keep them alive and that's why some of the best DPS units are ranged units both in PvP and in PvE. Uh, in PvE you can still get away with it for example like in Vortex it doesn't really matter because the boss is AoE hitting but in some of the other dungeons it can be an issue where the boss might target Lothair instead of your tank. So let's jump actually right into it and a lot of people haven't used, I mean they're familiar with the wild team but they are not familiar that much with the poison team in, uh, in Vortex. So the team that I, I'm going to be currently using, uh, let me actually set this up. So this is the wild team that I use. and. This team is fairly po uh, fairly strong just because of one unit and that is Flora. If you remove Flora from this team, this team's damage is somewhere around like at max it's 20 million depending on who you bring instead of Flora. Um, so that's one of the concerns with the wild team is like I, I hope they do nerf Flora because this unit is fairly strong in PvE scenarios, probably more so than the others. And what the team that we will be using would be Durango for poisons, Lothair as another DPS, and 
Urian for shields. So I'll be going with three support units in this game in this time. Uh, just because I wanted to see how much damage Durango and um, Lothair does. So most of my units are 90, 95, uh, none of them are 100, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna use an enlightenment aura. And the synergy, the reasoning behind this synergy is that uh, Urian is going to be my tank, and he's also going to be the one who shields everyone. And because of this damage reduction ultimate that he has, I want the boss's call of lightning to hit him right after he ultimates so that we are able to carry on with the run fa uh, for the longest time. And Ogok, another legendary who is pretty amazing, he has attack down and he has uh, healing for all enemies and immortality. Uh, Immortality again in Vortex. I think it's. I don't remember how many turns after that the boss starts ignoring that, but initially it can help if you're struggling with surviving. Uh, for our defense down and attack down, it's going to be Varna, who is going to be in the three years emblem hood set. Uh, both of the both of them are in the three uh, emblem hood sets, and Durango is actually in a mix set so I want more attack and uh, I'm also getting some attack speed from him just because I want to do I want to see how much poisons alone affect the boss um, and Lothair is going to be in an Alabasa night set it's the same set that I was using on Flora in the previous video and we're going to be using the enlightenment aura and yeah let's jump right into it and see how much we do Yeah, let's see. So, 60% of the damage is coming from one unit again. Um, but yeah, the team could definitely use another DPS unit. Our damage is slowly ticking up. It's uh, not as big. But we are able to keep attack down on the boss almost. Uh, consistently because we have two units that are able to keep that attack down helping our team survive more longer. and Ogok is healing we have some skill haste on him as well just so we get that heals consistently in For those of you who don't know, Urian also is able to keep attack down at, from his battle skill. But we are mostly interested in the shield that he does. So I've built him with defense alone, since his shield is based off of defense. And with the damage reduction, I'm hoping that with the call of lightning will not do as significant damage as it as it does. Because as the rounds as this fight continues to go on, uh, the Call of Light thing is what basically kills the team. So compared to Flora, his damage is definitely not up to the up to the wild team. Uh, his derived damage, from what I can see, is close to 150,000, whereas Flora is double that. 
and the team synergy for the wild team uh, especially in PvE is such that you have multiple hitters right so you have Tonal Alan and Eric who hit uh, quite frequently right after Flora's ultimate and that's why you're able to do that 300k damage so many times whereas in this team it's just Lothair who's able to do that derived damage and we are relying on the poison ticks uh, to do as much damage as possible so my guess is this team is going to do somewhere around like 25 30 million uh, but I've never not used this team before so we'll see I could probably benefit from maybe bringing in uh, Oster here it's just because his, he does a lot of damage uh, in a gambler set I would say or maybe even if I change the set on my uh, Durango to either the Alabaster Knight or uh, the three piece bonus from Gamma set could also help but we will miss out on enlightenment so I want to see how much difference would it make uh, if it does make a significant difference I'll keep you posted on that So as you can see, like Urian is basically tanking that Call of Lightning pretty effectively, uh, more so than any other legendary I've seen uh, tank it, just because of his damage reduction and for the fact that we have three champions basically keeping that attack down consistently on the boss. And as the Vortex difficulty increases in, uh, I think for my server it increases in the next 8 days, so probably after a week, uh, attack down is going to get significantly stronger just because how much damage it's, how much harder the boss gets. Uh, so I'm guessing the next boss would be 160 level and that would raise both the accuracy requirements and the gear requirements quite significantly. Uh, so doing that 15 million uh, for that top chest would be would be would get harder as as we progress to the season uh, luckily they did increase the legendary drop rate for uh, the, for the gear pieces that we use but it's still not going to be enough uh, from what I suspect you will need pretty meta teams in order to do to reach that maximum damage that you need So I guess we got lucky there, Ogok placed his immortality right uh, right before the boss's call of lightning which helps helped out Urian, else I think he would have been dead. Um, I think I might have too much skill haste on Urian where he's not able to uh, get in sync with the boss's call of lightning. But yeah, as you can see, the team can still push out. I think 35, more than 35 million at this point, from the looks of it. Uh, but we'll see how much damage uh, we're able to do at the end of the day. It's done better than what I suspected, to be honest. Oh, Urian tanked that again without any damage reduction. That's surprising. Will he survive? Oh yeah, he does survive. I think his passive came into play right there, uh, where he's able to uh, survive um, one time only though, uh, any fatal hit.
but you can see how much the damage is being mitigated at 110 bonus stacks that the boss has. Um, if it was my Kairosos, he would probably be dead by now. I think he dies when the boss is at around uh, 80 bonus stacks. Okay, now he's not gonna survive. Yep. Uh, it's most mostly I think if I in, if I adjust the haste on each of uh, Ogok and uh, Urian, I might be able to take it further. I think it's simply because that this is a little out of sync that we are not able to do the maximum potential damage here. Um, if we keep the shield on Urian uh, when he when the boss does his call of lightning, we may be able to survive for a longer period of time. But yeah, certainly doesn't look like we are going to survive for much longer. Uh, question is, can we reach that 40 million? Or no, it's a bust. Well, maybe one I can carry us over 40. All right, we are above 40. Yeah, but I think. If I synergize this better, uh, 45 would be possible. Uh, yeah. So resurrection was blocked there. So after a while, the boss does block this kind of thing. So as you can see, we did 40 million with a poison team. Uh, just two poisoners uh, built with complete enlightenment. Uh, let me actually go over Durango's gear as well to show what attack pieces that I got for him. So I try to maximize three things crit rate, attack percentage and enlightenment. So if I hit a roll that was either one of these three I kept on him. Uh, so here we unfortunately don't have enlightenment but we do have accuracy which he does need uh, so building a Durango is not an easy task in my opinion just because he needs so much different stuff I could probably replace this with something better uh, with more accuracy and attack of crit but yeah uh, something to do for the future this win rolled pretty well we got more crit rate uh, because he does need crit rate for his passive um, has a 40% chance of inflicting one stack of poison when a critical hit is triggered so it's ideal to build him with some more crit rate but yeah uh, this could be better could have been attack percentage and crit rate and we went with accuracy uh, negative ruin on him uh, simply because I use him in arena though this accuracy is still pretty low we do have high enough enlightenment on him so we have close to 400 enlightenment and around uh, 4.3k attack for Lothair we have around 4.6 uh, this could have been better considering he's only level 94 maybe if he had 100 level we could make this a 5k at least 5.5k 5 attack overall uh, his enlightenment is around yeah, 470 so pretty high enlightenment so we're using his derived damage to the maximum potential uh, still did well uh, really well considering that you know this is not a busted team uh, compared to somebody like Flora who's completely busted for PvE Lothair is still more balanced uh, you could still make a frost poison team without Lothair and probably lose around like 5 to 10 million damage but when it, when it comes to a wild team without flora you you lose a significant amount of damage uh, simply because I, either there are not enough units uh, in the wild team and the, the amount of damage that she puts out is just uh, yeah it's broken <laughs> uh, she needs enough in my opinion just because she is way too overpowered for uh, PvE and yeah it's it's not fun at all 
after a while it just gets a bit dull. So let's take him to Grave of Venom, see what we can do. Uh, I'm gonna try to use the same team. I'm not really sure how well we are going to do with this one, so I'm gonna keep those for now. High 60 with gems. So this is the team that I showcased last time on my Flora Spotlight video. So in this case, we'll go with the same team that we used right now. To Rongo. Oh, that took up a lot there. To Rongo and the last top spot was Olok. So if I go... I think this is still fine because once they reach their ultimate they will focus the boss and I can probably place him like this let's go with an enlightenment or a um, yeah I'm not 100% sure like whether I will have okay I do have enough accuracy for the debuffs So let's see. So he's doing significant amount of damage, but yeah, nothing compared to Flora. I think she's the PvE queen. We shouldn't have any trouble beating this boss. Yep. So we were able to do it in 28 seconds. Um, let's look at the damage from Lothair. But as I said, like I've done this, done this boss without Lothair uh, using slightly different team. Uh, Frost and Poison Duranga was still in there, and that did around the same time. Uh, so it's he's not a unit that if you don't have, but you have other legendaries that you can use, uh, that it's going to significantly impact you. He's a unit that is good to have, which I think what all exclusives should be in this game. They're good to have, but they're not broken to the extent that without them you just cannot compete in any of the dungeon racing. Um, so let's just back, attack. This is crap. Sell all the epics. And the reason that I say this is because at some level, if you you, whenever you're playing a gacha, especially, you should never feel that if you don't have one specific champion, uh, you cannot compete. Uh, that's a bad design, in my opinion. And if I go into the dungeon racing event, for example, uh, the next person that, with the legendary wild team, and that, this is what I mean, if you don't have Flora, uh, you, you cannot compete. And this should not be the case. Uh, this person used a frost team, and yeah, nowhere near. Um, it's uh, it's quite staggering the amount of difference a wild team does versus anything else in PvP. And when it comes to PvP, uh, is dominated by frost team simply because of one champion. And I'll do a showcase on her later as well. Uh, so let's move on to the next dungeon which would be Grave of Curse. And while this team does do well, uh, let's not forget the Varna, who is probably one of the best... Uh, she's one of the best PvE support unit in the game, uh, because one of her ultimate Recharge is really fast. It's, yeah, it's 16 seconds, so it's one of the fastest in the game. On top of it, if you build Varna with a decent enough attack, it can do a lot of cold damage. But from my experience, uh, you need a DPS that does derive damage or has some sort of ignore defense in their kit to really hit hard. Or they're using the Gambler set to do more damage. Uh, but yeah, I tried to get more attack on her just to see what what she can do. But yeah, it's it's not been that uh, successful. So we do have it.
attack and uh, accuracy. We have accuracy and attack speed. And uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a good unit for PVE. Not as busted as Flora or some of the other units in the game, uh, but uh, probably one of the best supports, which you can still do without. Uh, so I'm gonna use the same team just because they're geared and ready to go. And again, let's use the Enlightenment Aura and see how well we do on this one. Uh, this should be actually fairly easy just because we have a unit in, uh, in Varna who can remove the buffs that the boss does. We have shields, we have immortality, so we shouldn't be in any danger. And we don't need to worry about the shields either. So as you can see, even if there's, there's hardly any damage from the boss. Um, Urian does bring a lot of survivability to the team. Unfortunately, his kit does not have any control, so he he's not that great in PvP, just because you need a lot of control. But he has a lot of damage reduction. Um, so in those, if you need a tank, he can tank probably the furthest. Um, he doesn't have an attack down passive like Urgander, where Urgander is completely broken because of it. But he does bring a lot of utility in PvE situations where um, he does better than a lot of the other tanks. And there you go. Uh, we were able to easily beat the boss. 53 seconds, not the fastest time, but still pretty good. This one is... Crap. So let's just sell it. Yeah, so 60% of the damage coming from him, the rest are pretty much okay. And as I said, like, Vana, even with an attack belt, yeah, his damage really suffers because in PvE content, when you have somebody who can do derived damage, uh, it's nowhere near than regular attack damage. Let's just grab these while I'm here, else I'll forget them. So let's take it to the next dungeon, which would be the Rot. Uh, Rot would be actually pretty easy with this team. So, even though we don't have a heal reduction, right? Where is Lothair? There is a trick to this boss. If you have somebody who, ha like Urian, or even if you don't have Urian, you have just Varna, for example, uh, who does shield on the lowest HP champion. Uh, the one thing that we don't have here is a debuff remover, but um, yeah, that might be a little challenging. So, the way this boss works is once he does his ultimate skill, which if I can find it, yeah, devours the current target, dealing poison damage per second and restoring HP equal to 600% of the damage dealt. The last part is really important. So, the way you cheese this boss is if you don't have a champion that does healing prohibition or frankly you don't want to use one or build one you can cheese this boss by making a champion that has shield being swallowed so what this does is that even if he will your tank has a shield or uh, has a lot of defense he's he's not going to heal that much and i hopefully will be able to show you that because i think this fight is going to go for a longer period of time uh, and I don't have a cleanser here as well. So I'm just hoping that... Th so this shield is just going to protect us when we are swallowed as well. And I'm going to try to do it with 1x speed so I can show you. So it says 399 but his heal is nowhere near. So you can see that you can somehow mitigate it. Unfortunately, at the time he got swallowed, we didn't have that big a shield either. Um, but you can cheese this boss this way. I'm actually going to run it one more time, and I'm going to manual the ultimate from Urian. Just to show how little damage it, ha it does. When you have uh, a decent amount of shield. So I'm gonna... Close this. I never 
with the attack down and Urian shield is going to be really hard for this boss to gain any health back. So right now I'm going to do this and yeah he's not healing. There you go. So this is the point that I was trying to make like if you have like defense and shields it's, it's not going to make a difference in the healing so you can somewhat cheese it because he has to deal damage and shields don't count towards the damage. Alright, let's go to the next dungeon which is actually close by so I can just do this. Heretical Ruins. So this one is a bit tricky since we somewhat need more control for these two. I'm not sure how well this team is going to do here but We'll try it out. Possibly I can use another damage dealer here, like Oster, but I'll let it run with this since we are showcasing everything with this team. It's also unusual and I think it's somewhat of a spotlight on Urian as well. Um, I initially thought that he was not that good, but uh, the more I read his kit, I use him a little a bit and I leveled him up. Uh, he turned out to be pretty well. Like I, I actually use him in uh, guild versus guild because I was running out of tanks. Uh -huh. And over there, he actually shined pretty well. And I was seeing like how much less damage that he's able to take compared to some of the other tanks. Oh, we actually were able to kill both the minions. So we were never in danger there. 50 seconds fight, not bad. That did have some skill haste on it, so we'll keep that. And now we can go to the most the dungeon I hate the most. Um, ancient battlefields. And this one I don't like particularly because I think it's it's the HP, the defense, the damage from everything from this boss is just way too hot, over tuned. It's. Yeah. But hopefully, we are able to win this one. I'm not 100% sure if we will, uh, but let's check it out. So, I did my Ogre go. So the way this will work is, uh, I'm gonna keep Varna at the end, and Varna's passive, whatever the hero is inflicted with the control effect ignores his control effect. So you cannot control Varna, so that means that if you have, if you taunt, stun, charm, knocked up or whatever other debuffs there are for control, uh, you cannot do that to Varna. He's always going to ignore that and uh, probably repel with you with um, freeze or frozen in this game, uh, which is actually really helpful in some certain scenarios, such as PvP. Uh, there are certain occasions that you can use him, but yeah, mostly in this dungeon he's amazing for that because you don't need to build somebody with resist. So. Hopefully Varna is able to go again and remove that attack down. No. And yeah, we were a bit too late on that. So our Lothair died, but maybe if I had a bit more skill haste on him. Could have worked out better. But we do have Durango alive, so hopefully he's able to win this one for us. Might take a little longer. Uh, but this being a Lothair showcase, I'll just reset it.
So I'll probably manual this a bit. Uh, because I don't want the... So I can remove the attack down safely now. And let it roll. Yeah, even with attack down, if the boss is able to get the attack up buff, this fight becomes incredible. And if you somehow resist in taking that out, yeah, this fight can go south pretty quickly. So now we don't have an attack down. Okay, we do. Somebody place him. Oh, it's gone again. But luckily we are able to get immortality. And that's not going to help us because the boss removes the buffs. Yeah. This is <laughs> probably not the best team for this because we are putting up too many buffs, but we are still able to beat it. Curious how much damage Lothair did. So he did, yeah, he died early, but he was able to keep keep up with the damage. Uh, Durango, on the other hand, he did 30% of the damage. So if you are sleeping on Durango, don't. I've been using him uh, since. Yeah, I don't remember since I got him. Uh, I was I was fan of the artwork. I really liked his artwork and his kit seemed really good uh, compared to some of the other poisoners. And you might be wondering why am I not using Jatalia, who I'm sure you've heard about. And actually, in a poison team, if you just look at the end screen, she seems to be doing a lot of damage. But when I was uh, when she was level 70 and I was early account. I was testing her with and without poisoners because the skill looks pretty good on paper. But the problem is that she does explode all the poisons at the time, and you cannot keep up Lothair's passive going. And even when he does his ultimate, the more poisons you have, the more his damage is. And she takes the credit for all the poisons. So. By herself, she's not a great unit. Um, you can make a setup for her, maybe in like a fun PvP team, where you are able to use this to prevent resurrection. But yeah, the amount of accuracy you will need in end-game PvP, uh, this may not be the worth it. Uh, yeah, they need to rework her kit a bit. So that she's not so dependent on everybody else's doing poison. And it's somewhat... Because every poisoner needs poison to do some sort of a trick. Except for Durango. Durango is the placer. Uh, Lothair needs poisons on the target. More debuffs, more damage, things like that. But she, on the other hand, just explodes all the poison. So they need to rework her kit a bit where... Instead of this explosion, they need to fix it to, so that we can at least use this resurrection without a poisoner. Uh, because blocking a resurrection after the buff to Mithrasi, uh, the skill would be powerful, but the team requirement for this thing would, would be insane. Because you will need accuracy attack at a level that I don't think our game currently permits. Uh, so let's actually try to see if we can find something in PvP. I have not being able to find even the players from silver uh, I've just been looking at yeah as you can see I just look at the stone and the bronze all day uh, so fighting them would not be ideal showcase so if that's not the case I'm going to skip it Yeah, so we didn't find anything, unfortunately. I actually have stopped doing even arena at this point because there are no matches to fight. I, it's fighting somebody from bronze or copper is not. I mean, the points are the same, but uh, the, you get like one point to climb, and I did the math on this, and if I'm just going to get one point. You need 300 points to climb to the next tier, right? 
so if I go back here this is a small rant in the showcase but I need 300 points to climb to tier 2 if I face one point for each opponent there is I get 260 something points I calculated if I try hard then don't miss a single counter by every refresh um, so yeah, I'm never going to climb up until they fix that who I can see there are players in silver as you can see unfortunately they also give me two points one or two points I think storm is the only one I get four points from uh, but I haven't seen him for a while but yeah that was the showcase for Lothair let me know in the comments below how you like it and if there's another champion that you want me to cover feel free to show that share that uh, yeah make sure to like and subscribe thanks again for watching